Hi, I'm Andy Schrampka, and I'm with the Edge at OU Libraries, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a simple uh, physics simulation in the 3D modeling program Blender. So, if you open Blender up, uh, I'm using version 2.8. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 2.81 or 2.82, uh, they have uh, pretty much the same features. But uh, as long as you're using 2.8, you should be able to follow along with this short tutorial. So this is what your screen should look like when you open up Blender. And what I'm going to do is left click on the cube here, and I'm going to press X and delete it. And you should also have a little light bulb up here. I'm also going to left click on that, hit X to delete, and press OK. So now we have a simple scene with just a camera in it and nothing else. So now what I'm going to do is press shift, holding down shift and then press A, will bring up the add menu and I'm going to go into mesh and select plane. So now we have a new plane here and so this is going to be the ramp for our ball that will fall down it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S, which will open up the scaling option. And I'm going to hit X so I can constrain that scale to that axis. And I can also type in how far I want to scale it. So if you see in the, the top left corner, there should be a number. And as I change how I'm scaling it, that number should also change. Uh, and so you can type in a value that you want to scale it by. So I'm just going to hit three and it should scale by that amount. And then I can hit enter and it will scale the object by that. So now we have how long we want our ramp. So now we gotta add some, uh, some height to it. So now we're going to go into edit mode. So if you press tab, that will toggle between edit mode and object mode. And you can see there's a little drop down menu here that you can also click and that will bring you back into object or edit mode. So now that we're in edit mode, uh, if we can hit E to extrude, so if you hit your E key, it'll bring up an extrude menu and that you can control by your mouse. So we're just gonna extrude up by about two. So you can hit, or that's three, two, and then hit enter. Cool, so now we have a block, but now we have to put a, a ramp to it essentially. So what I'm going to do is uh, if I can select these two vertices here. So I'm going to select the top one first, hold shift to multi-select, select the bottom one. So with those two selected, I'm going to hit Alt and M, and that will bring up the merge menu. And so you have a couple of options here, and the one that we want is at last. And so what that will do, it, it will combine those two vertices into a single one. So now we have uh, half of our ramp. And if I can repeat the same option here, so I can select one vertice, hold down shift, select the other, then I can let go of shift, and then I can press alt, and holding that down, also press the M key. And that'll bring up that menu, and then I hit at last. And now we have our ramp. So I'm going to toggle out of edit mode by hitting tab, and now I'm going to add a floor to our scene. So I'm going to go to the Add menu by holding, hitting Shift and A, go to Mesh, and then we're going to add a, another plane. And this time we're going to scale this up by about 16. So if we just hit S and then type in the number 16 or 15 or some large number like that, it doesn't really matter. Um, 20 is probably a little bit too high, but any number will do because we just want a, a large enough floor for our simulation. So type in a number and then hit enter. And this is our floor. So we, so we have these two objects that are like a, a basis for our simulation, but now we have to tell Blender that we want to use them as part of a simulation. So what I can do is go over to, this is the, the properties tab, and there should be a blue one that looks like a, uh, like a solar system 
almost like a like a planet and then a moon rotating around it so that is the physics tab so if i click on that we'll have a couple of different options so with the ground selected i'm going to click on this physics tab and i'm going to select rigid body and what this does is basically tells blender hey i want to use this object for a physics simulation and so now we have a couple of options so we can just set the mass of this um, use what type of a uh, collider it wants to you want to use for the object uh, but the one that we want to change is the type so instead of active we want to change it to passive and so that tells blender that uh, we don't want this we want this object to interact with others but we don't want it to move in a sense so you want to use this for like a background object so like a ground floor is a perfect example uh, a wall that you don't want to move is another one that you would put the passive and we are going to do the same thing with our ramp. So we can left click on that, go to the physics tab, uh, excuse me there. Uh, so we can do the same thing with our ramp. So we can left click there and then go to the physics tab, press rigid body, and then change that from active to passive. Cool, so now we have uh, essentially half of this animation done or this simulation done. So now, why don't we create the uh, the ball that will roll down this ramp? So all that we need to do for that is hit Shift A, go into that mesh tab again, and hit UV sphere. And uh, so I can orbit the camera by pressing down on the middle mouse button. Uh, but if you don't have a mouse, you can also click on this little widget here, uh, and then hold down, and that will also orbit. So I'm just orbiting so I can get a better view. So now I'm going to hit the G key uh, or grab. So this allows me to uh, move objects around. So I'm going to hit G and then I, after that, I'm going to hit Z to constrain that movement to the Z axis because I want to move it up and over to right about the top of the ramp. So then I'm going to orbit so that I can see like a, a side view. Uh, if you have a large enough keyboard that has a number pad, you can hit one and that will move to orthographic side view. So it's a lot easier to uh, position objects this way. So now I'm just going to grab it and then move it to the top of the ramp. And then after that, I'm going to go back to this physics tab and click rigid body to enable that. And the only thing that we're gonna change here is the mass. So we want this object to uh, when it interacts with the blocks at the bottom of the ramp, we um, want it to be able to move for, move through them and knock them over. So we want this to be a really heavy object. So instead of one kilogram, I'm going to change this to 30. And that's all we need to do. Uh, we wanna make sure that, so I'm zooming in with the middle mouse button. Uh, there's also a little zoom widget here that you can click if you don't have a mouse but I just want to be really sure that this ball here uh, isn't inside of the ramp, because if it's inside here, uh, you're going to have a, a couple of problems when it comes to uh, animating the, uh, the object. So uh, you don't want it to be uh, clipping through the ramp. All right, so now we have the ball done. Now we just need to add those blocks. So what I'm going to do is again, hit Shift and A, open up the add menu, go to mesh, and then I'm going to hit cube. So now we have a new cube object. So I'm going to now hit G to grab it, and then hit X to constrain it along the X axis. Just move it right out in front here. And then I'm going to hit G again, and then hit Z, go up, just so that it isn't right above the, uh, the ground plane. So now I'm going to scale this object because we don't want the, the cube this big. So uh, we hit, can hit S and somewhere about that size. So it's about um, 0.2, I guess, if you want to type in a number. So but somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 is a good size. And now, like before, I'm going to grab it move it down towards the ground plane, but then again, we don't want to make sure that it's not clipping through the, the ground plane. Just for those the same reasons above, it can mess with the, uh, the simulation. 
and then I'm going to position this object, so I'm going to hit G and then Y to constrain it to this green axis. I'm going to move it right to the corner of the ramp. Because uh, what we're going to do now is essentially multiply this object across. So from this one object, we can create uh, a bunch of little ones. So there's another tab here with the blue wrench that is called the modifiers tab. So if we can click that, uh, it will bring up a blank menu with a little drop down here. And so if we can click the drop down, it gives us a whole bunch of options. But the one that we are looking for is called array. It's right here at the top. So we can click that and well, it looks like we have a, another cube added here. So um, this is a really nice tool if you want to uh, basically duplicate an object uh, a bunch of different times. So we are going to do that. Uh, instead of duplicating along the x-axis, we actually want to duplicate along the y. So I'm going to change this to 1.01, .01, just so it's just, they're almost touching, but not quite. And then uh, for the, the x, I'm going to click that and hit 0. Cool, so now we can duplicate this cube. So now I'm uh, going to multiply it just a couple more times so that we have enough just covering this ramp. Cool. So now we have enough going across on our y-axis. Now we need to uh, stack the cubes a few times. So what we can do is add a, another array modifier. And instead of in the x-axis, so make sure you're, you're doing it with the, uh, the second modifier, not the first one. It should be below it. So we can click, get rid of that. And instead of multiplying along the x, we can go along the z. So again, if we go 1.01, .01, so now we've added some cubes above the other one. So we can just do this a couple more times. Five is a pretty good number. And there we go. We have a bunch of different cubes here. So what I'm going to do now is apply these modifiers. So if you can go up to the top one and hit this button called apply, and then do that again for the second modifier. And now if I go into edit mode, so hit tab, we have a bunch of different cubes here. So a couple things before um, I go and separate these cubes out, we're gonna go to the physics tab again and hold hit rigid body. Just make sure that uh, we enable the physics simulations for this guy. And instead of one kilogram, I'm going to do a half a kilogram, so 0 0.5. And I'm also going to add a material. So there's this little tab, kind of looks like a, like a red circle, red sphere. So I can hit there and add a new material. And this will save us a little bit of work down the line. So with that done, I'm going to go back into edit mode. And if I hit with every box selected, so if you misclicked, um, if you want to select every part of an object, all you have to do is hit the A key once. So tap A, and it will select all of the geometry of an object. So make sure that everything is selected. And then if you hit P, which that will bring up the separate menu. And then if you just click by loose parts, now what that does is it creates a new object for each of those cubes that we had. So now if we go back in to object mode by hitting tab, you'll see that each of these objects is its own new cube. And it has that material that we applied to it. And if we go into the physics tab, it also has the rigid body that we added to it. Now the problem with this is that, so you can see, um, origins might not be enabled depending on some of the settings with Blender. I'm not sure if it comes uh, as default, but there is a, a little circle here on my screen and that just shows the, uh, the origin of the object. You can kind of think of that as like the, uh, the center of mass. So all of the physics interactions that go on with this body are centered at that point. And so that's good for this, um, this cube, it's in the right place, but not for any of the others. So what we want to do is select all of these cubes. So you can collect, select them by um, left clicking and holding down shift. You can also do what's called a box select. 
So if you hit B, it will bring up uh, these two uh, lines, and you can hold down with left click and then draw out a box and select all of them. Oop, select it a little bit more than what I wanted. Sometimes yeah, you want to make sure that you don't have anything in behind them. So go down to a different view, select these, and then these bottom ones I'm just going to manually select. Cool. So now, with all these selected, what I'm going to do is hit Shift. Whoop. Is it Control? Is it Shift? Nope. Alright, so now, with all these selected, I'm going to, uh, to right-click, that, that was a previous shortcut, right-click, and go to Set Origin, and then Origin to Center of Mass Volume. If I select that, it will move all of the origin points to where they should be. Cool, so now we are ready to test out our simulation. So if you are in the layout tab up here, so at the top, there's a couple of different screens, so I can go into the modeling one, uh, just a different view. Uh, the sculpting one is another different view, but if we stay in layout, we should have a little uh, play bar underneath here. So now what I can do is hit the play button and we can see our animation in progress. So yeah, this is exactly what we want. Then I can stop that, and if I want to reset it, um, I can hit this key here. Um, and a shortcut for uh, starting and stopping animations is spacebar. So if I tap spacebar, it will stop it, and I can tap it again, and it will stop it. Cool, so now I have this animation set up. Next part is to set up where we want our camera to be. So if you're on a numpad, you can either hit zero or there's a button over here that toggles the camera view. And so now if we were to render this as an animation, this is the screen that our uh, computer sees. So we want to position this where, um, wherever we want to um, like capture the scene. So, and this is just like an object, so I can left click on it and I can hit G to grab it and move it to where I want to. Um, and I can even do this while I'm in this view. So I can grab, so I can click on different objects, move it while I'm in this camera view. But if I just click on the outline of this object, I can hit G and position it wherever I want to. So I think, um, and you're, you feel free to position your camera wherever you want. It doesn't really uh, change anything, but I like a uh, kind of a low angle view behind where the blocks are, so you can see the ball roll down the ramp um, and also come out through the blocks. So I'm going to move my camera down a little bit, and then I'm going to rotate it. So if I hit R, then Z, and then rotate it towards the ramp, then I can hit R and X, um, and then uh, hit X again. And so that will rotate around the, uh, the normal axis of the camera. So if I undo that by pressing escape, oh, and you can undo any command. Um, so if you're in the middle of something, like you're, you're moving a block and you don't know what you're doing, if you hit escape, that will um, reset the command essentially. So what I was saying, uh, I want to rotate this camera up. So I'm going to hit R to rotate and then double, uh, double tap X so once and twice. So now I can rotate above this angle. And then I'm also going to um, drag the camera back. So if I move out, go out of the camera view, just hit G and then constrain it to the x-axis. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now if I hit spacebar to run our animation, we can see how it looks. And that looks pretty good to me. So now the rest of the steps is really just making this animation uh, look pretty. Um, so, here's a, a couple things that I think uh, make it look uh, a little bit better. So, you can start by adding uh, materials to these objects. So, what I did before with adding the material here, so now that they're all separate objects, these are all going to share the same material. So, I can go down to this Materials tab, and you can see it'll have this material slot. So, if I click on that 
double click on that, I can rename it something. So I'm just going to call this block. And then I can change the color by clicking on the color here. And it brings up a nice little color picker. So I'm going to go with something that looks a little bit like wood. So like a, like a tan color. I can even uh, change the darkness of it. Something a little bit brown like that. And then I can also change uh, the roughness. So this is probably the most useful setting, and that just uh, changes how much light gets reflected off of it. So something like uh, like uh, glass would have a pretty high uh, or a pretty low roughness value, whereas something like wood or stone would have a, a pretty large roughness value. So uh, I'm going to just increase this to about 0.8. And then I can always check how this looks. So if I press Z, it will bring up this radial menu. And right now we've been working in solid view. We can also go into material preview and that will show us how our materials look. So we have this little brown texture here and then I can add one to the ball as well. So if I left click on it, make sure that I'm in the materials tab, then I go and hit new add a material, and I'm just going to make this uh, like a met metallic material. So what I can do is I can go down to the slider called metallic. I can move that to all the way up. And then I can change the base color just a little bit. So I want it to be like a silvery metallic. And you can see it has taken on a little bit more of a, uh, a metal value. But you can still, so this ball looks really uh, pixelated. Um, so it should be smooth. Um, so what we can do is if we right click on it, we can go and change it to shade smooth. And now it looks, uh, looks a lot better. <laughs> it looks actually more, uh, like a, like a ball. Cool. So now we can do the same things with our ramp and our ground. So I'm going to select the ground and then hmm, I would give it like a like a dark color maybe not quite black but something along those lines uh, if you also have uh, textures you can apply those as well so actually why would I make the ramp this color so if you want to add a material that you already have existing to an object you go down to the materials tab there's a little drop down menu next to the new button that you would use to create a new material. So I can click that and I can choose all of the materials that I have in a scene already. So I'm just going to click on that material that we just added to the ground plane. And then, so these two objects will share a material. So any changes that I make to this one, so if I make it like a green color, it will also affect that ground plane. So if I go back to a gray color. So if you don't want that to happen, then you can just click this little button that looks kind of like uh, two pieces of paper and that will make it its own material. So now if we were to go to change the color, it only works on that material. Cool. So now we can go and I can show you how to add a texture to an object. So for this, I am going to go in up top here over to the shading tab. So what this does is it opens up a new view, um, but more importantly, it allows us to use something called the node editor. Um, looks a little bit daunting at first. Um, so there's a ton of options here. So this was actually the same thing that we were playing around with in the materials tab before, but now we can, uh, has a bunch of these sockets here that we can connect with different things. And this works a lot like the object view. So in here, I can press shift A and add a new object. Well, if I'm in the node editor view here, I can press shift A and I can add a new shade. So what I'm going to do is search and I'm going to type out image and select image texture. So I'm going to place this to the left of our shader here, and I'm going to connect the two color sockets together. And then 
So this is will apply an image to our ground plane of essentially whatever we want. So um, if you have uh, like a, a texture that you want in mind, or if you want to find one, uh, there's a good website called uh, textures.com. Uh, it's free. All you need to do is just make an account, and you can download uh, as many textures as you want. And that's where I get uh, a lot of mine. So I can open this up and then navigate to where you stored that texture. So I have a, a menu called textures on my computer. So a whole bunch of ones. So I'm going to go with a wood and then I think wood fine dark. And then make sure, so sometimes when you download these textures, you get a bunch of different maps. And if you want your uh, material to look photorealistic, you would combine these together. But just for a really simple texture, all you need would be the uh, the color um, uh, texture. So like just the actual picture itself. So I'm going to select that. And now we have some nice wood to look at. Awesome. So you can actually do the same thing with all the other objects. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go about doing that process, but it's the exact same thing. So now that we're in this menu, whatever object that we click on, it will bring up that material. And now we can, uh, you can uh, edit it with the, uh, the node editor. Uh, but now I want to show you how to actually render out this animation. So if we go up to the top here, should be render properties. There will be a couple of different options here. So the, uh, the one very up at the top says render engine. So we want to keep this in Eevee. So there's a couple of different uh, engines you can choose from. So Eevee is Blender's real-time render engine. Uh, the really nice thing is that it's super fast at rendering. And especially if you're doing animations with a lot of frames, uh, you want something that works really fast. So we're going to select Eevee and then Right underneath that, we have the number of samples that we want to do. So uh, what I like to do, especially for stuff like this, is change this from 64 to 128. Uh, it's still pretty low, so that uh, it will render individual frames pretty fast, but uh, higher than the default. Uh, so this is basically changing the, uh, the render quality. So if you want something to look really, really nice, you would add uh, a lot of samples. And you generally want to keep it in uh, powers of two. So I went from 64 to 128. Uh, the next step would be to 256, then 512, and, and so forth. Uh, but you don't really need to uh, keep to that. Cool. So with that done, now I am going to go down to the next tab, the one that says Output Properties. And so this is where we need to um, change a couple things. So the first one would be the Output folder. So when we go to render this animation, what it will do is it will output a bunch of individual frames and it will save all of those frames into a folder that we can choose. So we want to make sure that we put it into a, uh, a folder that uh, we can access. So we can go and change that. So right now it's in the temp. So if I go over, just create a new folder here. Just call it, uh, let's call it uh, images. And I can select that and select that as the output folder. And that is really the main setting that we want to choose. I almost forgot something and that is uh, the lighting. So if we go into the rendered view so we can hit Z it will bring up this radio menu, and then we go to rendered. This will show us what the camera actually sees, uh, minus the grid. So it's it's really dark. Um, we want it to be a lot brighter. So what we can do is first change the world lighting. So there's a tab here. It's a, another red circle, kind of looks like a world. Uh, if you look at it, it's close enough. So we can go and change the color of the background that we want it to be. So we can change the value, and if we're still in rendered mode, we can see, hey, we're making it a little bit brighter. So what I like to do is give it a little bit blue tint. Uh, you don't want to go overboard, but just a slight blue, so it just makes it more feel like it's underneath the sky. So with that being done, we can now also add individual lights to this scene. 
So what I'm going to do is hit Shift A, and instead of going to Mesh, I'm going to go to Light, and I'm going to select a Sun Lamp. Now what this does, it essentially replicates um, light that you would be getting from some like very large overhead source. So it's going to bathe your entire scene in the same light. And so if I hit G, it actually is a, a little object that I can play around with. And you can actually, wherever you place this, will change where the shadows of the objects go. So if I hit R to rotate, you can see that as I rotate it, it changes the shadows on these objects. So I'm going to rotate so you can see a little bit of the shadows when the rendered image and leave it at that. We can also change the, the color of it so we can make it a little bit warmer if we want to uh, change the, the strength. Yeah, and now we have a much lighter and warmer scene. So now, with the lighting all set, um, this is a really simple lighting scene, or lighting setup. Um, now with that being set, now we can go and render our animation. So in order to do that, we're going to go over to here, press render, and then press render animation. And so what that will do is it will start to render each individual frame of our animation. So before we do that, uh, I can go back to layout. So right down here, um, before we animate, we want to make sure that we play through our simulation so that it goes until the end. We can actually change how many frames our animation lasts for. So in, if we're in the layout menu, we can see the start and the end frame values. So we can actually change this to, uh, let's say, 200 or such. And you can see on the bottom here kind of a change. So you have a, a lighter shade of gray, which represents the frames that are going to be rendered, uh, and then a darker, which uh, they won't be rendered. So let's just play through our animation. You can s just uh, make sure that we save this data. It doesn't matter where we're looking in the, uh, the viewport as long as it finishes. All right, so it went through one pass, and as long as everything uh, looks good, uh, maybe we can add more blocks to this or do something else if you're feeling adventurous. Another important note is to make sure that we let this animation play through again before we render it. Uh, so since we, we change the, uh, the end frame and the start frame, uh, we just want to make sure that it goes through it uh, one more time just to save all that uh, necessary data for the simulation. So now we should be able to go and go to render animation. So once you are finished rendering your animation, uh, the time can vary uh, depending on basically the specs of your computer. Now we want to put it together in a video. So what we can do, well, what I like to do is go over to the compositing window, although it's definitely not necessary. So go over here and now we want to change this from the right now it's in the dope sheet we want to change this into the video sequencer so now this uh, if you didn't know blender actually can act as a video editing software uh, it really does do everything so what we can do is add those individual pictures that we rendered out so if we go hit add and we go up to image sequence we can now go over to where we selected to save those pictures so for me that was in the edge and images and so navigate to wherever you had them selected and if we actually just press a it will select all of them in the folder uh, as long as we don't have anything else in there and we can hit add image strip That moved out to uh, my rendered view for just a second. So this is uh, another screen that pops up when you're you're rendering. But yeah, so now that we have everything, all of the images in here, so what we can now go to is go back to the tab called Output Properties, and we can change this file format from uh, whoops from uh, PNG to uh, one of these uh, video types. 
So the one that I think most people use and is probably the most uh, compatible would be MP4. So we're going to click this, uh, the last option here, and then this drop down called encoding. If we click that, and then we go to the container and change that from Matroska to MP4. And we can also do a little bit of changes here. So you can change the codec to whatever you want. Uh, I can just usually leave it as a H264. And then we can also change the output quality. So um, we can have higher quality, but then it will generate a, a larger file. So there's a trade-off between there. And then also the encoding speed, which is basically uh, how fast it takes Blender to render out the video. So what I like to do is always put this to slowest. It takes more time, but then you end up with a, uh, a smaller file. So I think the, uh, the trade-off is worth it. But if you have a larger file, then eh, a larger video, maybe not so. It just depends on the project. But for us, we have a uh, pretty small video. So I think we are good to go. So with those settings in process, all we need to do, and uh, make sure you can change the, uh, the output directory. Um, I usually just leave it in with the images. And so when we go to render out this video, it will deposit it there. So all that we now have to do is hit render and then render animation. So it will start going through the slides again, but as you can see, it's going through them at a lot faster rates. And that's how we know that it's looking at each of those pictures that we spent time rendering out and putting them together in a video. So that is the entire process to creating a very simple physics simulation inside Blender and rendering it out into a video that you can go and share with your friends. All right, so uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to this tutorial. And uh, I hope you have a great day and uh, make sure to stay safe out there. Thanks.